Hello everybody and welcome back to Operation Logistics, where we are currently approximately ready to start working on actually implementing some vehicles. Of course, we don't have all of them modeled quite yet, but that's okay. So first things first, let's just go ahead and make some prefabs for them, shall we? So obviously this is going to be slightly problematic in size. We're going to want them a wee bit smaller. <laughs> And by a wee bit, I mean quite a lot smaller. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and make them into some prefabs. So let's go ahead and create an empty. And then I'm going to grab, I, I want to grab just this mesh in here, but apparently it's going to grab the entire thing. That's helpful. Okay, we're just going to have to do it manually then. So all of these will come down here. Yeah, we'll break the prefab. That's fine. And then this would be delivery vehicle and in fact I'm not gonna have a space there okay let's go ahead and create another empty here like so and then we'll just call this art I mean I'm not sure that my creation here can be called art but you know whatever <laughs> close enough okay so now we're gonna want to go ahead and place the delivery vehicle at zero 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 it's an interesting place for zero 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 to be and the reason for that is because our art inside of the art empty is not at zero 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 so what we're going to want to do is we are going to want to fix that because we're at zero pretty much ish well we want we want this to be positioned at zero, 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 right? So we want to just essentially add in this amount to all of it. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to do it one at a time, apparently. Plus that amount. Plus that amount. So that's a zero and plus that amount. Okay. So we are now at zero on that axis, and let's just make sure that we are correctly positioned, and it appears we are. Excellent. Okay, so we're going to want to do the same thing on the y axis, so we're going to just go ahead and subtract that out. So it actually just puts it at zero, but I'm not sure if this will be at a different number, and in fact it will. Hang on. Hang on. We've done this wrong. We need to be subtracting this number. Okay. About like that. About like that. And about like that. Okay, so that puts us back at zero. And then we need to do the same thing on the Z axis. So we're just going to... Honestly, realistically, these are all at the same Z. So I think we can just grab this and zero it out. There we go. So we are now in the correct position there. However, when we look at the delivery vehicle, we can see that the position is up a fair amount. I kind of want to make it so that that is not that way. So we can move this up. Hang on. We're in center. We want to be in pivot. So it's already correct. At least for art. Yeah, it's already correct. Excellent. Okay, so now we just need to scale this thing down substantially. We're going to do that in art, not in delivery vehicle. So in art, we're going to make this 0 0.01, 0 0.01, 0 0.01 to start. Okay, so we can see that that's still substantially too large. So what was this? Okay, um, I was just checking to see what the scale of these were. But the delivery vehicle is going to be its own special little scale. So let's go ahead and try bringing it down by another factor of 10. And see what that looks like. That's not too bad, actually. And then 0.025 for the height? That's too much, to be sure. What height does this need to be at? Right about here. 0 0.024. 0 0.024 one? 
0.0241. Okay. Well, there's that delivery vehicle prefab. We'll go ahead and create a new folder in our prefabs called vehicles. And we'll go ahead and drag in delivery vehicle and then delete it. Excellent. Now, everything that remains out here for the semi is, of course, currently uh, inside of this vehicles here. We're going to go ahead and call that art and then create a new empty. I don't want to create it here. Create a new empty. And we're going to place that out here. Place the art inside of it. And then we're just going to call that truck. Okay. So we want to do the same thing that we did before. Let's go ahead and take all of these over to zero. Did that break anything? It doesn't seem to have. Excellent. Okay. And then we just want to make sure that we are correctly positioned on the Z and the Y axis. And I think we pretty much are... So our pivot point would be here, and the pivot point of this would be here. We can then parent in, we're, yeah, we're going to need to parent in some of these wheels for this one, because the reason is that we're going to p pivot this here, for example, and then we would need this, we'd need the wheels to pivot with it here, and then this would pivot like so-ish when it's turning, etc. So we're we're just going to need to go ahead and parent in the wheels to cube 002. And we're going to go ahead and rename these. So we're going to call this tractor. And then front wheel. All right, we'll we'll call it front axle. And then we'll call this one rear axle B, and then this one here would be rear axle A. Rear axle A. Okay. And then this here is the trailer, of course. So trailer. And then this would be rear axle, not Alex, rear axle B. Oh my, rear Alex. That's uh, kind of interesting. And then this would be rear axle A. Excellent. Now we don't need to do that for the delivery vehicle because it's all just going to turn as one unit. But the truck is slightly more complicated. So we'll just go ahead and make that prefab. Now we should probably go ahead and scale this down. 0 0.001. 0 0.001. 0 0.001. Excellent. And then we're going to need to set that same position. 0.241. 0241, isn't it? Yeah, that's more like it. Okay, so, what's that size looking like? Not the worst? Perhaps? Perhaps it's not the worst. Yeah, that should be fine. Now, it does bear noting that because of the pivot point here, which, where is? Down there. Right, because we don't want this to be moved up, we want this to be moved up. 0 0.0241. There we go. Now, it bears noting the pivot point here is pretty substantially off-center, and I think I'm going to go ahead and fix that by moving the art forward about about there, 0 0.003. We'll see how that looks. That's pretty close. So if we rotate it around that axis, I mean, you can see we've got some pretty major shadowing issues, apparently. Presumably because of our shadow mapping. And actually, let's see about fixing that. Let's go to our project settings, quality, and let's change our shadow distance a bit. Let's uh, bring that right on down to be, like, <laughs> three. So, I mean, that uh, did something. Of course, we've also got our shadow near plane offset.
Let's keep it at right around five. So, I mean, we're not going to have substantial shadows. So there is that. But we can go back and fix this later. I just wanted to fix the problem where, like, one pixel on the shadow map was this big. <laughs> it was a little extreme. Okay. So. I mean, realistically, we're probably going to want to have, like, two different shadow maps. Something along those lines. Like a, a pre-rendered shadow map for the world, and then a close-up shadow map that would be dynamic or something. Something along those lines. Anyway, there is our prefabs made, so that's excellent. And now the question is, how are we going to go about assigning them to a route? Well, we can already do public route following route. And then the question is, are we going to create a new mode, like a route assign mode? Do we have one? Let's head into the business and check. Business. So we have interaction modes. Create route, edit route, remove route. Remove route. Vehicle transfer mode. Hmm. So then like vehicle assign mode? Or maybe in vehicle transfer mode, if we click on the if we click on the route in vehicle transfer mode maybe that should assign it in so like on enter vehicle okay so if we go into the route and then I actually I think we're gonna have to look at the waypoint where is the waypoint here it is so in here if we are in, if it's not edit mode and it's not, or it's not moused over, then we return. So I think we're going to want to do it up here. If business.interaction mode equals interaction mode dot vehicle transfer and business dot selected vehicle is not equal to no. So if we're in vehicle transfer mode and there's a selected vehicle, then we should just assign that route, like, we should we should say business.selectedVehicle.followingRoute equals root. Just like that. And then do we exit vehicle transfer mode? Well, when we're in the building, or rather, when we're in the building hex, I suspect. Uh, building hex. Vehicle transfer mode. So we go ahead and nullify it at that point and go back into interaction mode dot none. So business dot selected vehicle equals null, and then business dot interaction mode equals interaction mode dot none. Okay. So theoretically, we can now assign in the vehicle. There's no way to know it. So that's interesting. One thing we might want to do is go ahead and add in a list here. Public list vehicle vehicles on route equals new list vehicle like that. And then we can go ahead and add in here route dot vehicles on route dot add business dot selected vehicle. Okay. Now that's not going to actually do anything. The vehicle's not actually going to exit the exit the berth and then head out on its route quite yet but we can see that it's assigning it so let's go ahead and run this really quickly once it compiles and I'm gonna save the scene okay and here we go of course this is not hugely optimized yet but we're working on it that's a to-do. And then the question is, as the vehicle is doing the route, so like, we, we would need on enter building hex, we've already got that. That's good. Pick up and deliver, so we grab adjacent packages. Is that only on the building hex or on all hexes adjacent to that building hex? Either way is fine. 
I suspect it would be the latter, but I'm not 100% on that yet. And then, of course, we would need to, on day tick, progress through the... Or rather, on minute tick, progress through the route at the speed given in the vehicle balance. And, and subtract out the fuel cost. Refueling equals true. Where do we use that? I'm not sure where we use that. I don't think we actually do currently. Maybe we do. Anyway, this is ready to go. So we're going to skip the tutorial, and we're just going to hop right in here. And we are going to purchase ourselves this factory. And we're going to demolish this factory and construct ourselves a postal office in its place. Now, we don't want to construct it. We want to go ahead and get a delivery vehicle. There we go. That needs some work. <laughs> oh, well. So we're not in we're, we're not ready yet for any sort of uh, interaction mode. So let's go ahead and just create a route. Bam. And then we're going to take that over to here. Oh, yeah, we need to select the route. Take it over to here. Take it over to here. Take it over to here. Work complete. OK, so we now select our postal office, which we can barely get to. Grab our delivery vehicle. Should we not be in vehicle? Should we not be in vehicle transfer mode? Hang on. I thought that was how you get into vehicle transfer mode. I don't even remember. Okay, so our route prefab is here. And then this is our route. It's actually not showing our list of vehicles. That's unfortunate. But there are a couple of things that we should probably do here. First things first, though, it is time for a cut. So I'm going to go ahead and put one of those in. And next episode, we will continue to implement vehicles. Subscribe for more, and I will see you all next time.